So here we once again have Halo Infinite, this time the open world, running on a uh, Xiaozin Kaixian KX5640 engineering sample CPU from the Centaur Bankruptcy Auction. Uh, here you can see the CPU-Z information once again, motherboard information, memory is running at 2400 MHz, uh, the maximum the board supports in single channel because I couldn't get dual channel working. Uh, there you can see the SPD info, uh, GTX 1050 Ti for the graphics, as well as some benchmark data from CPU-Z compared against an AMD A10 APU. Uh, so let's go ahead and launch into the game. Um, it's on normal difficulty because, uh, you know, gameplay will still be pretty bad with uh, the low frame rate as well as the high latency overall, all things considered. Um, I have dropped a couple, couple more settings since the last video. Uh, minimum frame rate and maximum frame rate are now both 30. Resolution scale has been dropped and FOV has also been dropped to try to minimize everything that's on screen, uh, even though it makes things a lot more uncomfortable to play. But, as you can see, it doesn't really help the frame rate much at all. This CPU still just does not seem to have the clock speeds or the cache necessary to really make this a smooth experience and stream all the data and make all the calculations for everything in a reasonable time. Which is a shame, because uh, I was hoping that with some tweaks this would end up being able to play the game at playable frame rates. Um, but I guess it is in line with the expectations, being that this is a 56 watt 4 core 4 thread part on the Wudao Ku architecture, descended from the Via Centaur Isaiah 2 lineage. You know, not a really fast architecture to begin with, highly specialized small cores, um, and Wudao Ku is on 28 nanometers, so again, not a lot to expect from that lineage in terms of raw performance. So, you know, roughly I, I'd expect it to be in the ballpark of a Core 2 series in performance, and that's pretty much what we're seeing. I, I actually think a Core 2 quad of higher clock speeds, you know, 3 gigahertz or so, would probably do better here, probably be at least 30 FPS consistently, roughly. But this is, you know, in, in line with expectations, I guess, although not in line with hopes for this CPU. I have tried overclocking the CPU a little bit. The most I could get is 200 megahertz, and it doesn't really help. Again, trying to put it, put the memory in dual channel, maybe that would help, but unfortunately this board doesn't seem to support that, or at least support it very well, or support it with the particular kit of memory I have, which isn't very high quality memory, so maybe some better memory would actually let me get dual channel. In any case, with the overclock for the CPU, most I squeezed out of the memory was 2600 megahertz signal channel, but I don't really think dual channel would be enough here. I think an SSD would also help with some of the stuttering and loading, but at the end of the day, only so much can be done. But nonetheless, this CPU is still pretty interesting, and Xiaozin is still developing CPUs, and nowadays they're on a smaller node and pushing higher core clocks, higher core counts. So progress has been made by Chinese x86, certainly good enough for government use, and probably good enough for certain gaming and workstation tasks. I'd certainly like to try a newer Xiaozin CPU, but unfortunately those are still pretty hard to come by, at least in the United States and a lot of Western countries that may differ by country, at least inexpensively. Uh, you can get certain CPUs like the KX6640MA relatively inexpensively, even in the United States, but that's only a generation removed from this CPU and doesn't really have a lot of development beyond that, you know, only a single generation and roughly the same performance class for core 4 thread. So hopefully one day I'll be able to acquire one of the higher core count more recent Xiaozin CPUs and really see what uh, their development has delivered in the years since. This one is still interesting and I'd still like to test a lot more things on it. Unfortunately it just does not seem like Halo Infinite will be able to be playable consistently at a consistent frame rate on this CPU. You can, however, continue to watch, uh, although I wouldn't really say enjoy the gameplay here of Halo Infinite on the Xiaozin KX5640, since it it really 
never breaks 30 FPS outside of cutscenes and scenes with no AI running around. You'll see me a couple times try to minimize everything that the screen is rendering and, uh, by looking at things like rocks. And it, it just doesn't help the frame rate at all because the bottleneck here is that KX5640 and everything that it's having to calculate in the background for Halo Infinite's open world. Um, all the simulation, the AI, node pathing, all those calculations, uh, it just does not seem to be able to keep up with calculating movements, geometry, anything that it has to do in the background, the KX5640 just does not quite seem up to the task here in Halo Infinite outside of rare moments. So, enjoy, quote-unquote, the gameplay of Halo Infinite on the KX5640. Maybe in future videos, testing other games will reveal some bright, shining spots for the KX5640. In which case, those will prove more interesting. Definitely, if you find this sort of thing interesting and want to see me test more stuff with the Zhaozin CPU, uh, give an overview of the motherboard, maybe the architecture, test different games or mods, and if you're interested in any of the other content that I have on my channel, do feel free to like the video and also subscribe to keep up with anything that I put out. In general, there isn't really a exact theme to my channel besides things I find interesting, so if those things you also find interesting, absolutely feel free to subscribe. So, thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the video. Here is the distress signal's point of origin. This is our current location. This was, until two minutes ago, a banished forward operating base. I say was because now it's ours. Chief, what is she talking about? Now, here's the cool part. There are more UNSC forward operating bases that have fallen into banished hands. Well, pause. They have pause. Each one is associated with a territory. Here is the location of the UNSC signal I've been tracking. And here are two more fobs. Mark it. Let's go. Let's go. What? There? <sighs> Siempre hay algo contigo. Déjame en paz, por favor. Ready and waiting, Chief. Get on board and we can leave. to lock down Cortana, but I don't know why. What did she do that was so wrong? She was our target. I understand that, but... Is this classified? Because I don't have all the information. Chief, this is insane! I see bodies everywhere! Did you hear me? Everywhere! What intel did Dr. Halsey give you before your mission? Halsey only tells people what they need to know. 
fly pelican straight into enemy territory. No one will ever notice. Great idea, big guy. I still don't understand why you had to delete her. It feels like something's missing. Guess what? They noticed. They all noticed. And we've got a bad structure up ahead. Armored. Very heavily armored. It'll have to wait, I suppose. How close can you get us? How close? We're unarmed, and you're asking me how close? Put us down here. Here? We're still doing this. Hope this works, because it's as good as it's gonna get. It's close enough. It better be. I'm getting out of here. We're close to the UNSC signal's origin. Unclear. There's just too much chatter on all banished channels. I keep hearing the tower. It's probably the main structure we saw as we flew in. to the fob we detected. You take out those monsters, get me to that terminal, and I'll show what I can do. that, huh? Now to business. Let's lock down Fob Golf. Let me see. Yes, I was right. All I need to do is chat with the banished security protocol. And by chat, I mean push it out of the way because it is really not smart. And there. We now have ourselves a second fog. Was that you? Affirmative. So what, you're going to just rebuild the UNSC? Piece by piece? That's his call. I'm just trying to be helpful. Speaking of which, each fob seems to be linked to the battle net. And if I do this, we can piece together what the banished are up to. For instance, over here is some kind of banished outpost purpose unclear but it's well defended so it's definitely worth looking into and blowing up and here is what i can only describe as someone that the banished value highly noted his bio is interesting if you want to see for yourself it's waiting for you in the database they're tracking unsc transponders too caches containing valuable equipment and intel oh no it looks like there are multiple UNSC squads engaged in trying to survive. They need your help, Chief. Are you ready, Chief? What do you think? I already told you that the odds aren't great. For them. Then let's go find out what that signal is. Mongoose drop-off approaching your LZ, Chief.
coming up on that outpost we learned about at the FOB. Looks like some kind of salvage operation. What's our move? Shut it down. really want to protect their fuel silos. Clearly. So what are you going to do about it? Disappoint them. Nice. You need to manually raise each silo first. Each fuel silo should have a manual override. Scan the area 